It has been quite the journey for the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour on a late model stock side. Who would have thought that since 2015, the series would be as powerful as it is here today with so much more still to come. Connor Hall and Brendan Queen bring the field down for the start. The Visit Hampton Duck Com 125 is green from Langley. From the pole, Connor Hall going to slide his way up to the race lead to lead lap one with Queen slotting in a second. Side by side behind them there for third. Quapo on the bottom, Honeycutt up top as the tightly bunched field heads to three. You don't want to stay trapped up too high, particularly if you start backpedaling. So we're watching that uh, 10 car, Caden Honeycutt, trying to uh, maintain that third spot. But Quapple's right there on the inside, trying to take it from him. And look at Brendan Queen going for the top spot. Queen had a good run there off the corner. Looks inside of Connor Hall. Fans come to their feet here as Queen dips the left side down below the apron. Side by side for the top spot. Hall fends him off for now. Connor Hall says not so fast. He's holding on to it. He's about a half a groove higher than Brendan Queen. He couldn't quite get it done, the 0-3 car. He'll reload as they go back to turns three and four. All the while, Honeycutt has fallen back down into the bottom lane ahead of Carson Quapple to solidify himself there in third. The fight for second begins to intensify. Honeycutt outside, Brendan Queen inside, racing all throughout the top ten early in the going in this one with Honeycutt now getting a great launch off turn four to move solely into possession of that second spot. Honeycutt, where did he come from? I knew he was inside the top five. He is going for the top spot. He passed the 03 of Brendan Queen on the high side. He's going by the 77 of Connor Hall on the inside. New race leader, Caton Honeycutt. With Connor Hall looking to get the lead back before they come to the competition caution. He's got to run in three. Connor Hall realizes he wants to get their contact being made through turns three and four. That's typical on a short track, but he can't quite get it done. Caden Honeycutt's got to hold on to it and lead Connor Hall, but those top two are starting to check out just a little bit. All having a look right as the Volt Battery Caution comes out at lap 40. The competition caution will wave just as Connor Hall tried to pull down to the bottom of Caden Honeycutt for the race lead. And it will be Honeycutt leading at the conclusion of lap 40. High speed parade lap working through turns one and two. Caden Honeycutt trying to fight off Carson Guapel. Guapel, we saw how good he was on the high side. He knows the best time to pass. Well, it's on a race restart. Here he comes. He's going to technically lead lap number 41 as they go back to one and two. We saw Honeycutt get the lead and try to set the pace a little bit. He may not have that option here, even if he wanted to. He knows how stout that eight car has been all year long. And letting him get by you now may be your last chance to defend the spot from the Bass Pro Shops Junior Motorsports number eight. Honeycutt still hauling on the bottom side as Quapel continues to hold steady up top. They touch. And John. Josh Berry, a good thing to remember here, he won the 2019 edition, or 17 edition, I should say, uh, as he tries to make it happen, the championship in that car. Trying to make it happen, he goes to the inside there. Car number 77, battle for the second position, working through three and four, the preferred line, of course, is that 77 car. He has it where he needs it. Connor Hall. Going to get it back to second. Can he catch up to Caden Honeycutt now as they're back in one and two? And he's trying to get up to third from our reigning titleist. Trying to make it happen, and that's his signature spot. They go to the Waffle House following a victory, and I think he can close his eyes and circle this track just as quick. He uh, knows his way around it, and uh, he cannot quite clear the eight car coming off of four, but indeed now he may just do it as he go back to one. Yep, put uh, Brendan Queen up to third as now Carson Guapel has to deal with the 15 car coming off of two. Here comes Queen to the inside of Connor Hall. Bit of a late move there that time on the 77. Hall trying to fight back. And the fans on their feet to watch two Virginia natives, two hometown drivers, duke it out for the runner-up spot, lurking as we got trouble. Around goes the 31 of Cole Bruce, who gets tagged, and Dean Wilson piles into him with Landon Huffman and Carson Brown. Huge crash to put us under yet another yellow flag. This is the first that's not a competition caution and uh, heavy damage in there for several drivers, including car number four, the back end and the front end is just smashed up on Dylan Wilson. Tough break. A little bit of frustration here, it appears. After yeah, Wilson came bit. climbing into the crash, Cole Bruce appears to be very upset. Typical Saturday night, short track racing. 
Uh, a little displeased. To the KRC power steering restart zone they come. We're back underway with 39 circuits remaining. Honeycutt by a half a car length ahead of Hall, who tries to get a good run off turn two. The battle for the lead is on on the back stretch. Hall tries to slot down low. He knew he had to get down in front of Brendan Queen if he wanted to hold on to that second spot. They race off at turn four. Queen trying to shake the 16 of Chad McCombie. He can't do it. McCombie's battling back on the high side. And, oh, by the way, here comes Carson Guapel to the party as well. He gets muscled up a little bit there by Lane Riggs. Here comes Mason Diaz, the next car in line, as the lights go out on the racetrack. Oh, there we go. We're back on. Looks like we found the light switch to turn him back on to the crowd's approval here at Langley. What a lively crowd we've got here tonight. A packed house for sure. Into the KRC power steering restart zone they come. 31 laps to settle it. They fire off in one and two. Looking at Caden Honeycutt trying to shake off Connor Hall. Looks like he'll clear him down the back stretch one more time. Connor Hall goes right back to the bottom of the racetrack. And uh, we're watching Quap will get loose coming off of turn number four. He's driving that car as hard as he can to keep it going in a straight line. It was at Hickory Motor Speedway just a handful of races ago where he got into the backside of our reigning champion, Carson Quapple, in the final corner. This is with 16 laps to go. He's in the backside of Honeycutt. Crowd on their feet. And here is the fight for the lead in three. Contact there. Queen trying to look three wide to the bottom, but Hall takes the lead. New race leader, Connor Hall, back up to the point now. He started on the pole, has had a lot of laps in second spot, goes back to the point. Now, Brendan Queen wants some action here in second spot. They lean on one another in three and four, and they are driving as hard as they can with 15 circuits to turn. This may be the biggest question of the night right here. How long will it take Queen to make this pass? He gets loose back on the power. Honeycutt crosses back under. They nearly touch. They do touch as they come to three. And Connor Hall is loving this out the rearview mirror as he is trying to slide himself away to a victory. Connor Hall has pulled out to more than a half a second advantage, but the battle is intensifying for second spot. Brendan Queen versus Caden Honeycutt. Can Brendan Queen clear him? No, more contact takes place in three and four. Now Queen will clear him coming off of four. It's going to take a mistake off of turn number two and down the backstretch. This driver for Chad Bryant Racing went out and won the Hedgecock Racing Pole Award, and Connor Hall will forever be known as the 100th race winner in the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour. Connor Hall wins the visit Hampton.com 125.